Welcome to another edition of In The Box Seat Podcast. Well, In The Box Seat Podcast doesn't often go internationally, but today we certainly are. And before we do uh, any further proceedings, shoes on today. Have you got a job interview? I have, yes, with HR. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got a job interview with yeah. HR. You're looking sort of, you're, you're in freshly ironed shirt, shoes on, the game's on. The game's on. Anyway, nice yeah. to see you as yeah. always. No, good one. You too. I said international. Was that a compliment? You said nice to see me too. Goodness gracious me. I hope you've got that on record because it's not often he says nice things. But uh, let's talk about our guest for this week's podcast. He's a gentleman whom, to be quite frank with you, we don't know too much about. But that is why we've got him on this podcast so that we can learn about him and we can tell the world about him. Um, and we can find out a bit more about Mauritius Racing and uh, find out what uh, this gentleman's opinion is of South African racing. So without any further ado, it gives me great pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Jamir Ali Hussein, who is a jockey uh, in Mauritius at Champ de Mars uh, race course. And it just gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our podcast. Jamir, how are you? I'm good and you. Very good. Welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, thank goodness for technology because you know, to be able to do this uh, podcast, it, uh, you know, if not, we would have had to have flown to Mauritius, which wouldn't have been a bad thing. <laughs> it would be great if you come to Mauritius. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start with a few uh, simple facts, just so that the public can find out and learn about you. First of all, how old are you? Uh, I'm 22 years old, and I'm riding in uh, Mauritius racing since uh, 10 years now. So for 10 years. Uh, where is yeah. your, your your country of origin? Mauritius? Where, 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 did, Mauritius, where were you? Yes. Mauritius. So you're a Mauritian? Yes, Mauritian uh, yes I'm from Mauritius and I'm based here uh, in Mauritius. The involvement in horse racing, how, how did you hear about it? I mean, I know that at one stage it was just about the uh, national sport racing, so everyone is, 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 is accustomed to racing. But how did it all start for you, Jamir? Yes, you know, all people in Mauritius, we are in love with horse racing. So since childhood, I uh, I start to watch racing. And uh, my story is that my family is not involved in racing, but uh, I was attached to horses. I love horses. Then I, I decided I will try myself to be a jockey. And then after school, I tried to, to learn in some clubs. And I start from there, and I uh, entered the MTC, the Mauritius Turf Club at that time. And uh, I started as, as a track rider and became a, a grooms uh, and track rider at the, at the same time. And then apprentice started riding in races. So, so you, 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 you obviously uh, you, uh, see that you were champion apprentice, but your, your apprenticeship is finished now. You're a fully qualified jockey. Is that right? Yes, uh, I lost all my claim. It was in uh, 2019. And uh, since 2019, I'm a professional jockey now. How many how many winners have you had to date? You know what I mean, uh, till now I'm nearly two hundred. Sure, okay, that's that's quite a lot, of, a big number for Mauritius. Yes, you know, you know, it's difficult because we we have racing only once a week in Mauritius, and uh, I don't know if you know much about Mauritius racing. Uh, all the all the stable they try to to bring foreign jockey here to to ride for them, and uh, it's quite difficult to have some ride some. And if you get a ride, you must have a decent ride to win races. So uh, at the start, it's quite difficult. It's, you have to, to build up your name. And uh, it goes like this. So when you start winning races, trainers uh, start to, to trust you. Then you can, you can have some, some good rides and, and can have some winners. Tell me, what, what happened during COVID? Did, was there racing in Mauritius? Uh, it was difficult. We start very late the season because of the COVID. And uh, we start uh, in the reclo without the public. We start uh, racing, and it, you know, in Mauritius at the at the racetrack, every Saturday there there are lots lots of people who come to to the track to watch the racing. But in the reclo without uh, the public, it was quite uh, like a track work in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but we did have racing. It was it was a difficult time for I think for all the country. But uh, we tried to we manage it and uh, and we had racing and after after the COVID everything uh, went to normal. And um, tell me, um, how's your weight? Are you, you 
You know, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm very tall. Uh, the less I can write is 58 and a half. I can't write under. Uh, yes, at the time I was apprentice, I started writing at 53, 54. But now with age, it's uh, quite difficult for me to maintain the weight. So I, I can't write under 50, 58 and a half. So every week I take, uh, I took write for around 59, let's say, and, and more. And, but this is a, this is my main difficult because I'm I'm very tall and I'm a heavy jockey. Right. So, um, what what is the bottom weight in Mauritius? So, if, if you the lightest weight here, you you start by at fifty two, because even if you claim you can't ride under fifty two. Okay. So then it's hard to get rides when you're riding at fifty eight. Yeah, it's hard to get rides, but like I told you, if you build up your name, so some trainers trust you, they will give you rides even if you ride horses yeah. at sixty one sixty. Okay. This year I I was a champion uh, merchant jockey. Uh, so some some trainers trust me and give me some ride, and I I try my best to deliver. Well, that that's what I was going to say to you, Jamie. It is you know although you may be restricted by the weight that you can ride at, uh, it's obviously working for you. You know at that weight with with the support that you're getting. Although you know you'd love to ride at a lighter weight, it clearly is working for you. Yeah, it's a, it's a big work to, of course, to maintain my weight. And uh, like I told you, with all the support of the trainers and their trust, uh, I'm still here. I'm still riding. Otherwise, I would have stopped riding a long time ago. <laughs> Maybe you should speak to Bernard Feidherb about uh, what diet you should be on. <laughs> I know him quite well. He, when he rode here in Mauritius uh, so many years, uh, we, we rode together. And I... I'm, I'm also like him, he got the weight issues, the, the same issues as me. Yeah, but you're both good jockeys, which that, that counts. So. I, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, you know, you, you, you at least are both good jockeys that can ride with a weight issue. It could be worse, you could be uh, not so good jockeys and, and you know, it could be worse. So you're doing well, keep up the good work, that's what I'm trying to thank, say. Thank, thank you um, very much. Are, are you a family man? Are you married? Any kids? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not married yet, but I live with my uh, mother. Okay, okay. So you clever boy. <laughs> <laughs> the trainers. How many trainers are there in Mauritius? Because I know that uh, ex South African or South African trainer Dominic Zaki, whom obviously Andrew and I know very well, um, you know, was a part of your career and, and part of your 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 life there in Mauritius. But it's not only Dominic Zaki. Who else is there? Tell us about the trainers. Are there uh, many? There were many, uh, not many, but around 14, 15 trainers before. Okay. And okay. some st uh, stopped uh, operating when the MTC uh, stopped uh, organizing races. And then you, you got some new trainers who stop, uh, who start uh, working now. And you can, I don't know if you can see my hat. It's Dom Zaki Racing. Ah, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you better was, tell I Dominic was... to send us a few caps from Mauritius? <laughs> I was his jockey the, for this season, 2024, okay. and uh, we are champion together this year. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Andrew, and Andrew, quite... Andrew always, uh, Andrew always um, makes a joke with me because I collect caps. I'm passionate about caps from around <laughs> the world. As you can see, I'm wearing a Frankel cap. Yeah, the Frankel uh, one. And, and next week it could be a different cap because I've got so many. <laughs> so, Mr. Zaki, uh, a bit of courier sum to, to South Africa for us. I <laughs> 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 got you a cap. I see, you're out of it. I got you a cap. Now, Dominic Zaki is going back to South Africa today. Pardon? He's going back. Dominic Zaki is going back to South Africa today. Uh, phone him. If he hasn't left, tell him to pack the cap. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. Uh, now, uh, in, in, in Mauritius, oh, we talked about the trainers, we talk about the jocks. Uh, are there uh, how many are there a lot of horses that are in training? Uh, we know that Jean Michel Lee Shim is a big owner in Mauritius and many other owners, but are there a lot of horses and, and are there more horses to come from South Africa soon? Uh, we are on around 500 horses now at track work. Sure. And uh, normally, yes, when the season ends, there are lots of uh, tr uh, uh, owners who buy new horses from uh, South Africa. And they normally arrive in Mauritius in January because we start the season in March or, or April. So uh, I don't have the list. I don't know it here yet, but yes, it, normally some new horses must come. 
and we are glad to have courses from South Africa. Jamir, uh, what, what, what's the situation in, in, in Mauritius now? I heard there was there were a bit of an upset between, I don't know, was it government and thing. Um, what, what, what is the situation there now? Is it back to normal? You know, the situation is like uh, the Mauritius Surf Club operate 200 years uh, in the host racing organ as a host racing organizer, right. and now we have a new a new organizer called the PTP, the uh, People's Stuff PLC, and of course uh, they are not in good terms, uh, which is a bit normal. <laughs> yeah. And they are Come to South Africa, and the PTP yes, yeah. <laughs> and the PTP is a new organizer, so they are taking time to to put everything at the right place, right, which is normal. And uh, now, next month, we're going to have the, the election uh, for the government. So uh, the talk of the, of the country is all, is all about election. Everyone forget about racing because <laughs> the season ends two weeks ago. Uh, and yes, after the election, now we can restart talking about racing. Then we are waiting to see uh, who's going to organize racing next year. For, for next season, if the MTC is coming back or it will still be the, the PTP, honestly, I don't know. And we just have to wait uh, to see. But it makes it makes it difficult with two operators and one racetrack. Yeah, it, it's difficult. At, at some stage, they were organizing, uh, both were organizing uh, on the same track. Uh, they did uh, in Different between days. one and two weeks. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, the last two seasons, the MTC stopped operating, so that was only the, the PTP, the new organizer. Uh, I don't know how it will be for next year. Uh, honestly, I'm what? same like you, all the Mauritius, and all the Mauritian, we are same. We, we, we are just waiting uh, to know how it will go on next year. Well, let's just hope that it all stabilizes and everything good, because uh, racing, I mean, we all adore racing. We live for horse racing, but especially in Mauritius, everybody... Uh, just uh, absolutely adores horse racing. So I'm sure things will, will all fix themselves up. But recently there was an international racing uh, jockey's day that was quite successful. And one South African, Jason Gates, who's uh, certainly, if he's given a chance, he can deliver. And how was that that uh, e event? Did you enjoy it and, and was it well received? Yeah, the, the, the event went, went well. And uh, it was the first time the, the new organizer, the... They organized a, a, a weekend, an international weekend. It went okay. There was a different uh, jockey coming from different country. Yes, I met the the jockey Jason Gate because I was riding also in the in the weekend, and uh, he rode three or four winners, I think. He rode some for Dominic Zaki also, and uh, yes, he, he told me that it's a good experience, and he loved Mauritius. He loved the track because it's crowded with lots of people at the Shawnee Moss. And yes, like I say, it's quite a new a new thing for, for the new organizer. And I can say, yes, it was a good event. Yeah, well, that, that track would have suited Jason because he, he likes to get on and, and push. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will have to learn about the track. It's uh, not quite easy because it's too small yeah. with a, with a yeah. short straight, you see. The uh, apprentice Tucker, who, who we, uh, in, well, he apprentice in South Africa, is that right? In apprentice South Africa, he, he was on our show. There are many other Mauritian riders. I can't remember all of their names in South Africa. Um, be that as it may, any chance that one day we'll see you in South Africa joining them or, or coming to this country to maybe ride and grace us with your presence? Honestly, I don't know because because of my weight issues, I don't know if if I will get a chance in South Africa to ride because sure. of my weight. Okay. And yes, I did visit South Africa in racing. I went to attend two times the the Met in Cape Town. Okay. I went two times and uh, racing is lovely there. Uh, I love it. I love all the horses when I saw it because I follow South Africa in racing every day. And honestly, I don't know. I will try maybe one day because I was talking about this with. Uh, Dominic Zaki, he told me, let's come to South Africa and try to ride. I say, yes, maybe I will try one day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll look forward to welcoming you if you do and, and if you can pull that off. Talking of South African racing, you say that you follow South African racing every day. Um, what is the view on South African racing from the beautiful island of Mauritius? 
Are, you, you know, you know, are, are there many that are following it? Yeah, you know, Mauritian people love South African racing. You know why? Because all our horses came from South Africa. So people follow South African racing to know all the horses, to know some jockeys, to know the trainers. So they get they get their mind about the horses when they come to Mauritius. Yes. Sure. So yeah. people love South African racing as like for us, uh, the season is over now. So we don't have racing in Mauritius. That's why all the Mauritian people follow South African racing. Yes, I remember going to Mauritius once and, and you had a new a new shipment of horses that come in. And unfortunately at the hotel, I said I was racing and every waiter, every Mauritian came to me and said, I had to go through every horse. How's the form? How's the form? How's the form? <laughs> <laughs> they will ask you, they will ask you for tips. <laughs> so, <laughs> funny, funny, funny Andrew mentions that story when uh, I was on holiday in Mauritius it was the most, un I think I've told you the story before, we went to Moshoazie Beach, which in my opinion yeah, is one of the beach. best beaches in the world. But we got into the, as we got into the water, I, I turned around and put my back to the sea and looked up onto the beach. And from the left to the right, as far as the eye could see, everybody was lying on the beach, local and it, start, studying their race card. All you could see was a, was a sea of um, time, uh, race time. Yeah, so the the race race time. time. They could, it, it was unbelievable. I said to my wife, <laughs> I've never seen that before, that everybody's reading now, the race form. Yeah. People love racing in Mauritius. They yeah, love yeah. racing. Yeah. Now, um, I'm glad that you said that there's a following of South African racing uh, from Mauritius because that, uh, that warms our hearts, really, because that's what it's all about. And um, yes, you but, talk about... You but talk, I don't know if you saw... You saw, uh, mostly I saw in Cape Town, there are lots of Mauritian people who are owner of... Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Gujadar's name comes to mind. Mr. Gujadar, yes. Horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, he had, some, he had some horses here and I rode many winners. I rode my first win in my career for him. Okay, and then of course there's another owner that's quite big in South Africa, uh, Mr. Denis Le Breton. Yes, I know. I was riding for him also. Yeah. I know him quite well. Yeah. Yes, uh, other, I, I, saw, I saw that they got they got lots of horses in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, your, your pronunciation is quite good, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I was my father was born in Mauritius. I am Mauritian. Oh. I, I'm a Mauritian oh. myself, and uh, proud of it, and just absolutely love the country. Uh, my mom was born in England, but obviously, uh, so so dad's Mauritian. My late father's Mauritian, and uh, one thing I do regret is I'm unable to to speak the language fluently, you know, but uh, there's pronunciations, many people, you know, for arguments like Den uh, Denis Le Breton, somebody will call him Dennis Le Breton, you know, and of course it's not Dennis Le Breton, it's Denis Le Breton, and uh, yeah, anyway, it's just, uh, it's just uh, what, 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 you, what you're easy with. Now, um, what is the best horse that you've ridden, Jamil, in your career, in your opinion? Uh, you know, I did ride many good horses uh, at track work, but I did not have the chance to to ride them uh, in race. Like you know, White River was champion in Mauritius. Uh, a horse called a Kremlin Captain won twelve in Mauritius. I rode these horses uh, at track work, but when I rode them in race, it was at the end of their career. Okay. So I I did not won with them, but the best one I won. Uh, he was not a superstar horse. He was not an A division horse, but he 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 the perfect one for me. He's a horse called Vasco Street Tractor. Okay. I don't know if you know this horse. He's an stallion, and uh, I rode him six times and I won five times with him. Just repeat the and name. I, the sig just repeat the name. The signal dipped for a moment. Vasco Street. Tractor. Yeah, Vasco Street Tractor. I do yeah. remember the Vasco Street Tractor. Okay. Well, that's that's yes. Ron Knowles' horse, all the tractors. Yes, I think it I, I, I think the horse was, was in Cape Town, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something to do with Grant Knowles, too, because he uh, named a lot of horses to do with tractor. And, it was and, my, and my short story, I will tell you that I love this horse. He's the perfect one because you know why I will say it was, it, he's the best horse I rode, uh, I rode in my career? Because I went in front with him and I won. I sit in the middle and I won. I came from loss and I won. It's a sign of a good horse. No, yeah. Exactly. And I won five with him. And now uh, I got a small uh, club of, with retired horses. 
and he's with me now three years that uh, he's retired with me he, oh, he's living his life yeah that's tremendous you watch racing well across the world in south africa um but you know you watch it around the world too how proud are you when you see a man like Carice Teton, what he's done for Mauritius and South Africa, because in my opinion, he's one of the nicest human beings and one of the greatest riders. Yeah, you know, we are very, very proud of him, uh, of what he achieved uh, in South Africa and also in Hong Kong. And uh, I know him quite well also. Uh, he's a good friend and he's a top, top, top jockey. Now I saw that he's riding uh, two races in Australia also. He's getting chance there. So I wish him lots of luck and I hope he keeps on going and make us uh, more proud. I see he's riding in the Cox Plate next week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. Well, now you, you talk about, you say that you wish Carice well. Now I want you to do me a favor, something that we didn't plan, but somebody did ask me the, the Mauritian language is so beautiful and, and, and you say that we can't speak it, but I want you to do me a favor. I want you to send a message out on this podcast. Uh, to Carice, to the apprentices in South Africa, to whoever you want uh, uh, in Mauritian. So don't give us a, a, a five words. Give us a few sentences. So if you're happy in your in your beautiful language, go for it. Okay. Mosfet Caris, beaucoup victoire ko, fait nous fier de lui et qui nous déjà fier de lui. Et pour mon approche aussi qui de l'Afrique du Sud. J'espère qu'ils vont apprendre bien, qu'ils vont monter bien, qu'ils vont ramener nous beaucoup de victoires. Euh, parce qu'ils connaissent que Maurice nous déjà, je t'ai nous fier déjà. Isn't that the most magnificent language? Yeah. Hein? It's just beautiful. <laughs> and it gives me goosebumps and it, it makes me a little emotional because it reminds <laughs> me of my dad. And, you know, he, he used to speak French at home and it's just unbelievable. Well, that's a fantastic message that you've sent out. We don't quite know exactly what you said, but whatever you said, whatever you said, I'm sure it was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> nah, it's a good way to put it. <laughs> Last one or two last things to discuss before we, we wrap up and, and don't take much more of your time. It, it, nah. it, one of the most memorable moments in your racing career thus far, Jimmy? It will always be my first winner. Okay. Because okay. Uh, my first winner was even me. I, I was not uh, expecting to win that race because the horse was, it was a low division horse and he was about to be retired. So that, that was supposed to be his last run. And the trainer gave me the ride, and I was claimed four at that time. Uh, I was shocked when I won with that horse. Uh, I won that race, and and the trainer kept uh, kept the horse in training, and he uh, the horse won two races after that. Sure. And that will be memorable for me, my first yep. winner. It's quite a thing, you know. When when I don't know how horses actually understand it, but. When they know they're having their last race, they suddenly put in their best effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I, I think he knew that the trainer is going to put him uh, <laughs> retired now. So on that day, he ran for me yeah. and, and he kept winning two races after that. Well, you, you say that, you, you say that, and, and it's a coincidental, of course. But right here, we're recording this podcast at Hollywood Bets Gravel and 20 meters away from us is, is the winner's box, the, the winner's area where I was doing an interview yesterday with Daryl Moore, who, who, who trained an eight-year-old winner. And, and the horse was off form, and I was at his stables a couple of weeks ago, and I said, well, how's Forrest Jump doing? And he said, oh, he's getting to the end of his career. He's off form, and we may have to retire him. He's had two runs since for a third and a first. So they seem to know when you're <laughs> going to retire them. <laughs> so the horse knew that he's going to be retired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, let's leave horses aside. As I say, we've got just one or two things to talk about. Uh, let's leave horses aside and let's talk about Mauritius, the country, um, because it's, 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 the, it's a holiday destination. It's just a, a working country. It's a magnificent place. It really is. Yes, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a touristic uh, place because we've got beautiful beaches, we've got beautiful forests, and uh, it's uh, peaceful to live in Mauritius. There is no no fight, no war, anything. So it's peaceful to live here, and even with the climate, it's always, uh, even in winter, you can say it's summer in Mauritius. Yes, yes, yes. So it's always good weather. It's a it's a nice place to live in. Have you, until you get a cyclone. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a small island, but very, very nice to live. Yeah. And of course, sometimes, as you say, the, the cyclone hits and all the rest of it. But uh... yes, we are between in the Indian Ocean. Uh, it's normal that we yeah. we get the cyclone, yeah. but yeah. it's all right. We are used to it. <laughs> <laughs> have you been to Pomplamus Gardens? Yes, you have. Yes. Beautiful, the big lilies. And, and yeah. when? Which year did you go? Nineteen oh six. No, it was 1847. <laughs> <laughs> what, what year? Was it 10 well, years ago, 20 years ago? Geez, no, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. I went for the first time uh, when my mom turned 70, and we've been since. But, you know, everybody tells you the stories, the beauty of the beach, the crowd at the races. And you, think, you go on to Google and you have a look at it. You think, it, you know, it's good, but it can't be that great. I'll never forget waking up in the first. We arrived in the night. You couldn't see anything, obviously, outside. It was dark. And I remember waking up the next morning, opening the curtains of our apartment, and actually my breath was taken away because it's a paradise. It really is a paradise. And our, our oh, best beach you. was that whole, that whole strip from uh, um, Le Cerisier, and that where the Le Cerisier apartments are, um, Trobiche on the left, and of course so you go out to Club Med at, um, at um, Mochoisie. It's just world Mochoisie. class. Yeah, absolutely world class. But uh, um, Jamir, that's really about all we, we have the time to talk about and, and, and just to thank you for your time and just to learn a little thank bit you. about you um, and, and wish you all the best in your career and we, we'll certainly follow you with great much. interest. Thank you. Yeah, I think you thank should you make a trip. You make thank a trip you very to South much. Africa. We'll find you a few rides at 60. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, and get on the phone to Dominic. I don't, maybe the plane hasn't taken off yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Jamil, all the best to you. <laughs> Bring, bring that from South Africa. Eh? Oh, he, he did? Some, yeah, he must have some at his place. <laughs> <laughs> nice to talk to you. Nice to meet you officially and nice to, to you and your family. You. All the very best and, and we wish you thank well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there we go. That's, thank you, Jamir. Goodbye. Bye-bye and thanks for bye. your time. Bye. That's, uh, that's Jamir Ali Hussein, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Mauritius as he'll log off and uh, as he has. And uh, we will just continue with the podcast. You know, I'm sticking. I've got, to, I've got to go to the hard crop of this afternoon. So maybe you've got to go to the yeah. Well, you better. You, last time I saw you a week ago, you said that the, your good wife was already upset, and you still haven't obeyed. She's still upset, but anyway. Yeah, you, who, she'll you, be nice tonight. Because <laughs> are you going to go today for a haircut? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, you know, interesting. Don't you wish we were multi gazillionaires where we could just fly all over the world and go and meet these beautiful people? But thank God for technology. What an informative chat. I mean, he's a guy that I didn't know much about, to be quite honest with you, but now I know a lot about him. Yeah, well, I googled it and it didn't come up, so yeah. maybe I had the wrong googly. Yeah, but uh, lovely, lovely for the racing fraternity to, to learn about yeah. it. And, and, the, and the following in, Mar from in Mauritius on South African racing, that's what really touches my heart. Yeah. That's good. That's, yeah. that's exciting. But he's a nice bloke, too. Absolutely. I enjoyed that, yeah. Tough, uh, uh, it's a pity that he, you know, the weight, but it's obviously working for him. You know, people are prepared to give well, him the Well, the thing is, rides. if you're riding at that, 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 those 58s and the 60s and all that, you, those horses are generally at the top, the cream of the crop, because they've got there. So, you know, the ones at the 52s and the 53s, oh. it's the, the bottom of the rung. So, sometimes it works out in your favour. Ask Bernard, he's, he's won a few. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, there's a few things that we have to uh, talk about. Uh, sad things, happy things. Um, but I think let's go straight to, to a very, very sad bit of news that broke yesterday. I was on air working at the races with Raheel and the message came through that our good friend and colleague Shaheen Shaw passed away with a heart attack. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I spoke to him not so long ago. He's a man, a passionate man, and, and he was here yesterday, gone tomorrow. What's that saying? Here, here yesterday, gone today. Yeah. No, I, I, we, he, the last time I met him, I, was, well, I spoke to him, was here. He was, I think it was for the July. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we had a good laugh. Eh? Did a lot of work a with Hollywood. Man. Absolutely. Did a lot of work with Hollywood. Did a lot of work in his community. Did a lot of charity work. And just him and his wife and, and his family. Our condolences from the In the Boxy podcast. Was really, a, really sad news. He's a real character. I, yeah, I, yeah. I enjoyed every minute with him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Shame. And, I, uh, you know, and I'm glad that I was notified of the news so that I could have disseminated yeah. it on TV. But Raheel was, I don't know if, how much you watched yesterday, he was talking and talking. And while he was talking, I read the message. Yeah. And he came back to me for a comment. I said, I'm sorry, I, I didn't yeah. listen to a word. We've just received this terrible news. But uh, 
uh, uh, you know, condolences go out to the Shaw family. A sad, sad day in South African racing yesterday. Uh, we will certainly miss Shaheen Shaw. Then um, there's a huge South African uh, contingent going up to, going across to America for the uh, Breeders' Cup, which is next weekend, Friday and Saturday. Essie Vungu Vungu and Beach Bomb. How exciting. It's so nice to have South African horses um, featuring on the international stage. Whether they're good enough or not good enough, they're there. They're there. Yeah, and, good point. Uh, I mean, it, it, if they do win, hopefully, or then they, uh, the, the world is our oyster because they'll say, oh, these horses are not too bad. Yeah. We can get them for nothing. Yeah. Uh, could be, it could be anything. Yeah. Could be anything. <laughs> it could be anything. Yeah. So let's come over to the sales and start buying here. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, the dollar and the rand exchange. Yeah, that you helps. Can, you can buy anything yeah, for yeah. nothing. So a beach bomb ran third uh, last time in the, in the, in the local debut yeah. there. And then, of course, Essie Vungu Vungu won. There was a great video put out with the Americans and the pronunciations. Yeah. Yeah. And shame, of course, it, you know, they mentioned that it was an Afrikaans word. It's, it's obviously a Zulu word. Uh, but that it's, a, it's a native, you know, it's a, it's a native language to them uh, overseas there, and uh, they'll, they'll learn about Essie Vungu Vungu. And yeah, we wish them all the best. The connections of Essie Vungu Vungu, of course, Hollywood, the connections of Beach, Bomb, Drakenstein, uh, all the very best, and, and fly that South African flag very high. No, no, it's good because I think Owen. It all started at, uh, uh, there. It started at Hollywood, yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, it did. Good for Owen. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a huge contingent of Hollywood uh, staff and. and friends of Hollywood going across and uh, I'm sure that we'll get great coverage from the South African press that will be there. So this, the Breeders' Cup, that's next weekend, Friday and Saturday, uh, Isi Vungu Vungu and Beach Bomb. Then uh, back to a bit of sad news, uh, news also broke out that uh, Captain's Ransom uh, passed away while giving birth. I mean, that was, uh, it was also another tragedy in the horse world. Yeah, it is. I mean, but that's the, the dangers of breeding, you know, that the Big ups and big downs, yeah. and, and it was a real serious down, down, especially for for Bossy and Suzette because they've only just started this, that, and that was probably going to be their, their flagship, their flagship mare. Yeah, you know. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so it is very, very tough. So, to the uh, team at Hopes and Dreams, Stud, Ferdy, uh, and and the Fillion family, uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to you as well on the loss. But of the foal survived. The eh? foal has survived. And I'm sure the team might be able to find some footage on the social media of the foal. She's now got a surrogate mother um, at Clava Flay Stud, uh, provided by John Costa. And That's she, good, the breeders that, work together. Absolutely, yeah. the breeders work together. And she is a, the ringer of her mother, the, the, the foal. I think they've called her Cappy's Dream or Cappy's something along that line. Oh, she's going to run like her mother. Yeah, she's, she's, right, she's yeah. A splitting image. So, yeah, so that's where uh, the, 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 little, the little baby is. I want to talk a little bit about stallions and, and sires and, and also incorporate a bit of international interest and, and discussion into the podcast. Um, and let's start off with, with Frankel. Uh, Frankel, who's a, a, you know, standing at Judmont, was a mighty racehorse, mighty uh, a st a stallion. He's a mighty sire now, yeah. Absolutely, sure. you know, he's, uh, he, was, you know, he is by Galileo. Just want to read some, some, some stats. I think, it was, I think according to Google, I may be wrong, 350,000 pounds for a service fee. Okay, can I say that again? 350,000 pounds for a service fee. Well, I'm 400,000. <laughs> <laughs> he was unbeaten 14 out of 14. I mean, that is a statistic. But he cruised, eh? Oh. Sure, he was the highest rated horse in the world at one stage. Trained by Henry Cecil, another legend at Newmarket. Tom Creedy rode him in all 14. Just a top, top racehorse and a top stallion. And you can see on the top of my head, we were talking about collecting caps and, 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 and just memorabilia in racing. Uh, all the way from Judmont, this, this beautiful Frankel cap. Uh, and to the team over there, thank you. It, it really is just something really special because he is certainly a special, special horse. Yeah, and, and um, hopes and dreams start. They've got a, f a new Frankel. What? There is oh, indeed. I was call him Frankenstein. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. There's, there's two. Let me get it right. I'm just referring to my notes. There's two first season sires at stud in South Africa right now. One is a Drakenstein stud called um, A Case of You. 
Right. Okay. A case, is it a case of you or a case for you? A case of you, I think it is. A case of you standing at, uh, at stud at Drakenstein. And then there's Frantastic, Frantastic who okay. is at Hopes and Dreams. Yeah. And, and I believe that these stallions are already busy and, and doing very well and have settled into their new job uh, quite well. Andrew, uh, the other, one or two other stallions that are, are having their first season, Thunderstruck at Ridgemont. Um, expert Eye at Paderberg. I think Expert Eye is going to make it because yes. he's, he's, he's overseas stock are doing really well. So yeah, good yeah. luck to Sally. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Sally knows how to run a stud farm. She's the, the main lady there at Paderberg. But another one, we can't remember them all and, and we don't certainly don't want to offend anybody if we've forgotten a, a new sire at, at stud. It's, it's, it's just nothing malice. We can't remember every one of them. We're talking off the top of our head. MK's Pride, Heversham Park, they've got MK's Pride right. first. So there's a lot of new stallions, which is good for the breeding industry, which means it's, not, it's warming up. Yeah, I was speaking to Michelle Wing the other, other day, and she, she's just been to the Cape. She said Comity Ding's first foals are bloody outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Master Archie's foals are outstanding. You know who else's foals are absolutely outstanding as well? Uh, Jet Dark. Good. Whew, goodness gracious me! And when I, f we all, we all learn in this industry every day. And uh, my interest is bigger in racing, uh, and and now it's growing and breeding. And you know, people would say, "Oh, that's a lovely foal." And they think, "Well, it's a gangly foal. What do you mean it's lovely? It's a gangly." Foal. And then you look deeper, and you, you know, you can see that they're going to grow, hopefully, to be magnificent yeah, individuals. Yeah. But mm -hmm. really, some nice foals. So comedy ding, that's interesting. So comedy ding foals, good. Master Archie foals, looking good. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, I saw a couple on the farms here in KwaZulu Natal at Clifton Stud, and there was uh, Blue Sky Thoroughbreds. They've had a couple of. You've uh, been gallivanting there. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we try and get as much time as we can in with the horses. Oh, jet dogs. So jet dogs too. I speak to Blythe. I think he's fish are about the right size now for me to catch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, jet dog too, stamping them and making them look good. Another one Celestial City at Summerhill Equestrian. That's right, that'll be interesting. That'll be certainly be interesting because you know, uh, oh, the blood's there, the blood's there, and I can tell you, all these uh, new sires, they'll get the weight put behind them and they'll certainly uh, be marketed and, and, and please God, may they do very, very well for all concerned. Uh, Thunderstruck we've touched on. I think that's pretty much it. And as I said, if we have forgotten a, a new sire that's gone to stud, uh, just drop it in the comments line just to, to help us and to, to share it with the public and, and because we can't certainly remember anything uh, we can't remember everything all of the time george we've got that uh sale coming up on sunday i'm glad look at that there we go here it is here it is indeed the back is a beautiful cover of it lovely gray horse wings equine and the front uh, yeah cape racing sales it's a breeze up and unbroken two-year-old sale i see our peewee is ready to zoom in so uh, he's got quite an odd stance when he wants to zoom in. So rather than letting him hold that stance, so shall we, hold, shall we make him hold the stance? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's get the book in and, and he can zoom in and, and he can show everybody. It's going to be cutting it fine because this, pod, this uh, podcast will probably get released. Well, I don't know how long it'll take him to edit Friday or Saturday uh, because this, this uh, 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 sale is Sunday the 27th of October, but I'm sure the podcast will be out by Sunday. Well, in fact, they're listening. It's definitely going to be out by Sunday. So you'll be able to uh, go online, have a look at this, get bias cards, get to the sale. It's at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville, and it's managed by Cape Racing Sales. So that, thank you for reminding me about that bit of news. And I think that's it, Andy. Plenty of racing action all around the country again. Um, the no. weather's turned good. Yeah, we had a lot of rain, but it was nice. We need the rain. You know, we missed the racing, but we rain's needed too. The gravel got lots, so we didn't get much up, 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 up country. Okay, but it's an absolutely cracking day in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. That's it from us. It's been a wonderful show, uh, if we may say so ourselves, as it always is. It's, it was really informative and a lot of news and a bit of sadness, a lot of joy. And again, to, to Shane Shaw's family, we really will miss him. But uh, that's a wrap from us. Anything else to add? No, well, I think you, that's about you know, it. You're going to the barber. I'm going to the barber. Okay. No, her name is Missy or someone. Missy. Missy. Okay. Missy. I know the wife bloody booked her. So yeah. Okay. Oh, so she was determined you were going to have a haircut. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. I'll be Sean. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap from all of us. And just the last parting shot is, you know, it's to hear uh, uh, Jamir's talking about horse racing, and we've said it before. 
for us it's a sickness you know we've all got african horse sickness it's a way of life i mean even you and i say this humbly and respectfully are, are semi-retired you still you know when scottsville coming back i want to go to the races yeah, you, I know. You, know, you work I'm, still I'm in the industry scottsville. it's in the road from marisburg yeah, yeah that's terrible yeah, it's know. absolutely terrible but uh, it should come right soon hopefully but yeah it's a, it's just a passion it's a it's it's a way of life people think we freaks well maybe we are freaks but my oh my we wouldn't change it for the world that's it from andrew harrison warren lynn Ferner, jamir ali hussein and the entire team behind the cameras punt well stay safe be nice and where will we see you as always right here in the number one box Thank <laughs> you.